every day, Monday through Friday, by the makers of Ovaltine. Never before in history have people realized so fully the importance of vitamins and minerals. Everywhere, people are seeking the best possible sources of extra vitamins and minerals to keep them in tip-top good health. And many are delighted to learn that one of the richest sources of vitamins and minerals in all the world is Ovaltine. Yes, your old friend Ovaltine is actually one of the richest sources of vitamins and minerals. Now, here's why it's so important to know this. Because it means that as little as two glasses of Ovaltine each day, and three average good meals, including fruit juice, of course, will give you all the extra vitamins and minerals you need. According to experts, all the vitamins and minerals any normal person can use for health. So, why worry about it? Why cause yourself needless concern about whether you're getting enough vitamins and minerals? Rely on your old friend Ovaltine to give you all the extra vitamins and minerals you need for tip-top good health. And you fellows and girls listening in, remember mother and dad are interested in knowing all about these things. So be sure to tell them how Ovaltine is one of the richest sources of vitamins and minerals in the world. How it's the most delicious way of getting all the extra vitamins and minerals you need. And I'll bet they'll let you start drinking it tonight. And now, we continue the chapter, The Destruction of the Nazi Submarine Base, with Captain Midnight and the Secret Squadron. In the last adventure, Captain Midnight and his agents of the Third Front arrived in a secluded French farmyard in the German truck which they'd been, they'd captured in San Michel. And there, final plans were made, and a small band divided Captain Midnight and Joyce to venture out in a small boat to meet Captain Thompson and the British commandos, while Chuck Ramsey and Ichabod Mudd are to remain with Monsieur Sivray and Monsieur Berteau to help the French underground in their desperate project against the machine gun nests and gun emplacements commanding the entrance to the submarine harbor. Our present scene, however, opens in the village of San Michel, shortly after Captain Midnight and his companions have made their escape. Darkness has just fallen, and the Gestapo officer, Baron von Karp, is entering the stable from which the secret squadron agents escape. Behind him is his assistant, Captain Einmann. Listen as Baron von Karp asks sharply. But where, Einmann? Where? Straight ahead, Excellency. Sergeant Müller is waiting with a flashlight. Now I see. What did you find here, Sergeant Miller? We have found a trap door on the floor, Herr Baron. Uh, where does this lead to, Einmann? Quickly, tell me. Into a tunnel, Excellency. Then in the direction of the cafe, which was burned down. Oh, some trifle of mine. Everything has been destroyed in the explosion. Yeah, Baron von Karp, there is nothing left. But undoubtedly, this passageway has been used recently. Sergeant Miller and I found fresh footsteps. I begin to see the whole thing, Einmann. This man, Berto, has deceived us. Do you remember one time when we were in the cellar of Berto's cafe? Yeah, Excellency, I remember it only too well. It was the time when we received the wrong information about the commando raid. Yeah, and Berto did not wish me to stay in his cellar. He was very nervous, especially when we stood before the wall leading in this direction. I remember that wall. It was covered with shelves upon which Madame Berto stored her jams and preserves. Uh, in that wall was a secret door leading to this tunnel. There can be no doubt of it. And your excellency will remember that the cafe was burned down the same night. Mm, that scoundrel Berto was afraid I would return and investigate after the commander raid was so over. So the cafe was thrown to the ground. And remember, Your Excellency, the strange boy and girl who disappeared in the cafe. There can be no doubt, Einmann. They were the American secret squadron agents, Chuck Ramsey and Joyce Ryan. The assistance of Captain Midnight. And they, together with Captain Midnight, were seen in the passageway leading to the submarine harbor. Captain Einmann. I am Captain Einmann. What is it? A truck is missing. It was standing near this stable. There were those seen to enter it, then the truck drove away. They were thought to be soldiers, but... Oh, I what don't... are you talking about? Of course they were not soldiers. They were Captain Midnight and his secret squadron agents. They have been hiding beneath the San Michel Cafe. That has been their headquarters. That is the reason of the explosion, to destroy all trace of it. Which way did the truck go? I, I, I do not know, Your Excellency. Then find out. In that truck are the most dangerous enemies of the Third Reich. They must be captured. They must not escape. Order out every available patrol line. All roads are to be searched. The Luftwaffe must be warned. Quick, get going. There's not a second to lose. And for the moment, we return again to Captain Midnight. 
You'll remember that the secret squadron commander and Joyce had the dangerous assignment of meeting Captain Thompson and the British commandos as they towed the barge filled with high explosives toward the French coast. After almost an hour of climbing over rocks and descending tortuous cliffs, Captain Midnight and Joyce arrived in the small cove to which they'd been directed by Monsieur Sivray. We find them standing beside the rippling water, listening to the pounding of the surf against the nearby shoreline. After a moment, Captain Midnight turns to Joyce and says, Well, Joyce, here we are. But I certainly don't see any boat. No, I don't either. Gosh, sir, do you suppose one of the Nazi patrols has found the boat and smashed it? Sibre said that all boats had been confiscated. But he also said that this one was well hidden. Hey, look, look above. Great, Scott, a searchlight beam. Yeah, that's playing along the shoreline. It's coming this way. Get ready to duck. There's an overhanging ledge back of us. It'll be here in a second. Look how closely it follows the shore. Yeah, the Nazis aren't taking any chances. I certainly hope Chuck and Sibre find out about it. All right, back under the ledge. Okay, sir. Say, that's a powerful searchlight, believe me. Yeah. Look, the beam stopped moving. Now it's beginning to come back this way. Yeah, so I see. If we could find that boat, we'll get a break. How do you mean? By the shape of the coastline and the location of the searchlight, it commands a long line of shore. Luckily, this happens to be at one end of the line. If we find the boat, we'll have to get it out into the sea while this portion of the searchlight's arc is blacked out. Yeah, I see what you mean. There, the light's passed us and start down the coast. And we know something now that we didn't know before. Well, what's that, Joyce? Well, just as the light passed, I saw the mouth of a cave close to the water. It's to our left and almost underneath us. Maybe that's where the boat's hidden. Thank heaven you've got such sharp eyes. All right, let's work our way toward that cave. Right. I'll go first and you follow me. It is a boat. Yeah, but how in the world will we get it out? Somebody got it in, we'll get it out. What I'm worried about is whether there are any oars or not. What's that? I found the oars. Now then, let's see whether we can get the boat out. There's a ledge to go over. Well, let's both pull at the same time. The water isn't very deep. Yeah, I'm afraid it can only be taken out at high tide. If I remember right, that was a half hour ago. Gosh, we may not be able to get it out. We can't waste a second. Watch it now. Let's push with all our strength. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. How about it now? It's a boat. Yeah. Yeah, but that searchlight is coming back. I don't think it sticks out far enough to be seen. Now listen. We've got to get all set. And as soon as the light returns and passes us again, we'll have to start out. There, the light's gone by. All right, you get in the stern and I'll take the oars. Okay. As soon as we get out of the cove, we'll be in the surf. Those waves are awfully high. I know that, Joyce. But we've got to get through them. And what's more, we've got to get out far enough so we'll be out of range of that searchlight by the time it returns. Get ready. The light's coming back. I'm all set. You get the word. The light's passed. No. You'll have to direct me. I can't see ahead. A little bit poor. Yeah, there. Now, straight ahead. When we hit those big waves, you get a firm grip on that seat. And we can be turned upside down. Yes, sir. A bit starboard. Okay. Now we're headed straight for the open, and we're beginning to hit the waves. How about that searchlight? Yeah, it's at the other end of the dark. Now, it's beginning to come back. We can't wait for a series of small waves. I'm going to give these oars all I've got. My head is straight. Yeah, you're okay. All right, here goes. A little bit port. Yeah, that's enough. Captain Midnight, look out. There's an awful big wave coming. Hang on, Joyce. Hang on. Oh, gee, my knee. The boat almost hit straight up. I guess we're all right. How about that light? It's getting closer. You better hurry. How far out are we? Only about 50 yards. We'll have to get out farther. Watch it now. I'm going to give it all I've got. Hurry, Captain Midnight, hurry. That light's almost here. There it comes. They'll either see us or they won't. Oh, we can tell by what it does. If it continues along the coast, we're safe. If the is out this way, we'll know we've been seen. It's moving to the end of its course. I think those soldiers must be half asleep. They get used to moving that light so often, they get careless. Thank heavens, I think we're far enough away from shore. Now, I can settle down to steady rowing. And we're behind schedule already. And for the time being, we leave Captain Midnight and Joyce as they pursue their desperate mission out on the rough waters of the English Channel and go to the headland above the rocky cliffs which guard the entrance to the submarine harbor. On a bare, windswept rock, we find Monsieur Sivre, Chuck Ramsey, and Ichabod Mudd lying close together, looking down at the rugged shoreline far below them. Listen. That search site sure got me worried. How in the dickens is Captain Midnight going to get out of that cove with that light going back and forth every few minutes? It will be a most difficult job. 
Captain Midnight must wait until the light starts to go back. Then he must get far enough away so that he will not be seen when the light returns. Well, he must be out beyond the shore now. If he isn't, he won't meet Captain Thompson and his commandos on time. I've just been watching that searchlight. It's kept going back and forth just as regular as a clock. If it had picked up Captain Midnight, it sure and heck would have stopped. Yeah, I'll say it would. But, gosh, Monsieur Savre, what about that searchlight? We can't let it stay in operation. Because when the barge of explosives is towed in, it'll pick it up right away. Of that I've been thinking also, Monsieur Chuck. It will be necessary to send a squad of men to capture these searchlight crew just before we make the attack. Well, look now. I got an idea. When they start the fake commando raid to the south, all them guys in the searchlight crew will be looking in that direction, see? Yes. Now, that'll be the time to jump. Oh, that is a good plan, Monsieur Mott. As soon as Bertrand returns, I will tell him and he will select the men to do this job. Hey. Huh? Look down below. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Where? Between us and the machine gun emplacements. I don't see nothing, Chuck. No, no, no. I see the man who walks back and forth. It is a sentry. Oh, but guys, we didn't know anything about any sentries. The ablet is a new thing. And perhaps this man is, is not the only one. We gotta do something about that guy right away. C'est vrai, you're right, Monsieur Mott. We cannot make the surprise attack upon the machine gun nest until the sentries are out of the way. There's only one thing to do. And Nicky, you and I can do it. We'll have to slip up behind that man and capture him like the commandos do. And what's more, we can't let him make a sound. You, you can do this? Captain Midnight's trained every secret squadron agent for just this kind of a situation, see, Ray. Don't you worry about us. Now, listen, you go along the line and see if there are any more. Have them taken care of the same way. See, Monsieur Mutt, I will do these at once. Come on, Nicky. Down on your hands and knees. We've got a job to do. With grim determination, Chuck and the faithful Ichabod Mud start forward on their desperate mission. Silently, giving no warning... They must creep close enough to the sentry below them so that they can leap upon him and stifle his outcries before he can give an alarm. Will the two secret squadron agents be able to do this? Don't miss the thrills and hair-trigger action in tomorrow's adventure. And now, just a word of explanation about something I told you yesterday. You'll remember, I told you that our government wants us all to get all our extra nickels and pennies back into circulation. First, because getting those nickels and pennies out into use will make it unnecessary for the government to use up valuable copper and nickel for stamping out new pennies and nickels. And second, because if we turn those pennies and nickels into war stamps and war bonds, we'll be helping in a double-barreled way to win the victory. But here's something for you fellows and girls who've been saving old pennies thinking they were valuable as old coins. Well, let me tell you this frankly. Experts tell us that very few old pennies are worth any more than their face value. About the only ones that have any extra value are the real old Indian head pennies that are just practically perfect. Now, if they're worn smooth, even the tiniest bit, chances are no dealer would give you more than a cent for it. So don't hoard those pennies and nickels. Your country needs them now. Open up that old piggy bank, clean out that old coffee can coin collection, take out those pennies and nickels, and change them into stamps and bonds. Now, this is a special urgent request for the United States government. Don't be a penny hoarder. Get those nickels and copper coins into circulation right away. And tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, to Captain Midnight. How much closer can we get? I don't know, Chuck. If we keep going straight ahead, we'll have to crawl along this fat rock. It's going to be tough to get close to him without being seen. Let's watch him for a second. He seems to have a regular beat. We've got to find some place along it that'll give us a chance to get close to him. Okay, let's watch him this time. Here he comes now. Until tomorrow, then, this is Pierre Andre, your Ovaltine announcer, saying goodbye and happy landing. This program came to you from Chicago. This is the Blue Network.